Welcome to our video series on upwind mainsail trim presented by SailsInc.com. Today's topic is angle of attack, which is part one of a four-part unit on shaping your sails. In this series, we're presenting a comprehensive review of basic and advanced mainsail trim concepts. We want the series to be useful and understandable for all levels of sailors. Our strategy is to start with small bites and build them into a complete picture of sail trim. We'll use a visual approach and give you questions to think about during the presentations. We'll stay practical, using theory only as needed. People learn in different ways. If you like to learn by reading, you can find an outline version of each video on our website at salesing.com. This series is divided into five units with several parts per unit. In lake sailing, strategy and tactics are very important, but good boat speed makes strategy and tactics a lot easier. Good boat speed requires proper sail trim. Many sailors are fast in some conditions, but not in others. That's because sail trim is hard to master, with so many var variables in wind, sail design, and rig setup. As Stuart Walker's quote points out, you may never get more than 85% of your best upwind performance. But we have found lots of opportunities to improve sail trim one piece at a time. That's what this series is all about. Our first unit covers four aspects of mainsail shape. For each topic, We'll discuss the things you should be aware of, why it's important, how to control it, and indications and cues to look for. We'll also start building the bigger picture by addressing interactions, how the various aspects of sail shape affect each other and respond to changes in the wind. Today's topic is angle of attack. An easy way to understand angle of attack is to think of an airplane wing. To gain altitude, the pilot brings the nose up so the wing is at a steeper angle to the wind. In other words, the pilot increases the angle of attack. This deflects more air downward the plane climbs. In sailing, the angle of attack is the angle between the apparent wind direction and the cord line of the sail. The cord of a sail is the straight line between the luff and the leech. For more about how a wing or sail creates lift, see our website or the videos on our YouTube channel. Sailing with the proper angle of attack is the first thing you learn in sailing. You pull in the sail and head the boat away from the wind, increasing the angle of attack. The sail stops luffing and off you go. The deflection of the air and pressure differences produce lift that propel you forward. The deflection of the air also produces drag, which is one of the forces that limits your boat speed. As you get better, you learn to sail in the groove. Sailing in the groove means that air is flowing smoothly over both sides of the sail. This maximizes lift and minimizes drag. If you're racing, you've got the basics of sailing in the groove. The faster sailors have also mastered the fine, po fine points, such as those listed here. These fine points are the main topic of this discussion. Controlling the angle of attack is very simple, but we're going to cover it here for completeness. You either adjust the boat's heading or adjust the angle of the boom to the wind. To increase your angle of attack by steering, you simply bear off away from the wind. To increase your angle of attack using the boom, you either pull in the main sheet or pull the traveler to windward. Note that pulling in the main sheet affects other aspects of sail shape, such as fullness and twist. If you want to adjust the angle of attack without affecting sail shape, you have to use the traveler. Here's our theory section for today. In a previous salesing video, we covered the key concepts about lift and drag. We'll summarize the main points here. The best way to show these concepts is with a graph. Here's a graph showing lift and drag as you increase the angle of attack. 
The horizontal axis shows the angle of attack. First, we'll show how lift changes as you increase your angle of attack. In the left portion of the graph, you're heading into the wind. Your sail is luffing and you have no lift. As you bear off and pull in your sail, the sail starts to fill and you begin to get lift. As you continue to bear off, more of the sail fills and lift increases. If you keep bearing off, the leeward side of the sail will stall and lift decreases. Now let's look at drag. When you are headed into the wind, you have more drag than lift because the flow on both sides of the sail is stalled. As you bear off and your sail starts to fill, de drag decreases because flow starts to be attached to the sail. As you bear off further, drag increases because you are deflecting the wind more. If you bear off too far, the sail begins to stall on the leeward side and drag increases dramatically and quickly becomes as large as lift. That's why you should never stall the leeward side of the sail upwind. The lift to drag ratio shows how efficient the sail is at various angles of attack. We want the combination that produces the most lift for the least drag. As it turns out, the most efficient angle of attack occurs when the windward side of the sail is still slightly stalled, but before the leeward side of the sail stalls. That's right here. These graphs help us understand the optimal sailing points for various conditions. The low groove is for when you need the most power to accelerate the boat or power through the waves. The middle groove is for best efficiency, combination of speed and pointing. The high groove is for making progress to windward at the expense of power and speed. Controlling your angle of attack would be relatively easy if that's all you had to worry about. Since you have many other things to focus on, it helps to have a variety of indications and cues. In these next slides, we'll point out nine different indicators and show how each is useful for different situations. The first group is what we should all strive for, sailing in the groove without looking at the sail by using feel, sound, and looking at the water. Let's start with feel. If your boat feels lively and powered up and you're hiking with a slight tug on the tiller, you're probably in the groove. A good way to check is to head up a little bit and see how the feel changes. For medium and heavy air, this may be all you need to stay in the groove with your head out of the boat. This next one is very simple. But if you get an unexpected header, the sound of the sail luffing will give you a quick audible cue. It always pays to focus on the ripples in the water. When you're in the groove, the ripples will be coming at about a 45 degree angle to your boat. If you look ahead, you can often anticipate a shift by comparing the motion of the ripples to that 45 degree reference line. This next group of cues is good for a quick check to see if you're pinching too much. If the sail visibly luffs, you're sailing out of the groove. This is not fast in light to medium air. Before the sail luffs, the sail shape becomes less firm near the mast. This is an indication of sailing high in the groove. If your mast is flexible, it will bend slightly to leeward when it is loaded up from the pull of the sail. If the mast is not loaded, you are sailing high in the groove. The mast will usually unload before the sail starts luffing. Telltales and wind vanes are a direct indicator of angle of attack, since they point in the direction of the apparent wind. 
Some sailors, even top performers, use these when sailing upwind. Here are sp some specific tips we have found useful. Telltales on the shrouds are good for quickly spotting changes in the apparent wind direction. If you put one low enough on the shroud to be near your line of sight, you can glance at it without turning away from the water ahead. A change in telltale angle tells you a response is needed. A forestay telltale on boats without a jib is very useful in light air. It's harder to feel the boat in light air, but with practice you can find a telltale angle that makes the boat perform well. In an MC scow, steer until the telltale points just outside the leeward side stay. Then you can adjust based on feel and your leeward luff telltale. A wind vane on the masthead or in front of the lower mast gives you similar information as the telltales. In light air, an advantage is that a masthead vane will show if the wind direction is different at the mast height rather than near the water. If so, you need to add twist to your sail to match the wind shear. Some sailors use the wind vane to detect whether they are in the wind shadow of other boats. We have other videos on that topic. If you could watch the airflow over a sail in slow motion while sailing, you would see lots of variations in angle of attack. That's part of what Stuart Walker meant in the statement we quoted earlier, that sailors rarely perform better than 85% of their maximum performance due to the inability to constantly manage sail trim. The best we can do is be aware of the interactions that we can sense and control. Here are a few of them. We'll ask some questions, let you think about them for a moment, then answer them briefly and cover more about them in future sessions. If you added a jib to a boat that didn't have one, how would the presence of the jib affect the angle of attack of the airflow over the mainsail? The jib deflects air before it gets to the mainsail and puts the mainsail in a header. This means the main shield, mainsail has to be sheeted in tighter to get the proper angle of attack. This is similar to the effect of having another boat ahead and to leeward of you. The other boat puts you in a header and you will need to bear off to stay powered up or try to sail very high in the groove to maintain a gap. If a puff comes along in the same direction as the true wind, will that affect the angle of attack? How about a lull? In other salesing.com posts, we've talked about the effect of puffs and lulls on the apparent wind. A puff, a puff changes the direction of the apparent wind and appears as a lift, which is why your response to a puff should always be to ease the sail. A lull appears as a header. For more, see these posts on sailing puffs and lulls. In a future video, we'll address the concept of twist. Putting twist in your mainsail gives it different angles of attack at different heights. What about the effects in waves when the boat is pitching fore and aft? Again, the answer rel re relates to apparent wind. When the boat is pitching forward, the apparent wind at the top of the mast is different than when the boat is pitching aft. Here again, twist is important in compensating for this. Angle of attack is one of the simpler aspects of sail trim. Still, we hope we've given you some insights into its importance and why it's more than just making sure the sail isn't luffing. We also hope we've shown you a few new cues to focus on in specific situations and encourage you to become more sensitive to the cues based on feel. Finally, we've set the stage for future discussions about how, the, how other aspects of sail shape, such as twist, affect the angle of attack. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment. If you like our content, please subscribe. Thank you.